The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the March 31st. The What is today? Today is, uh, today is the... Uh, what is today? Is today Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Today's Thursday. It's the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. Sorry about that, folks. I had some system problems here that I'm just trying to recover from, and clearly it has thrown me for a bit of a loop. But you, you know what Stevie likes to say, everything in life is happening for us, not to us. So uh, that's what uh, we're going to go try to figure out why it's happening uh, to us uh, or for us out here. But in the meantime, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877 927 if you can't call in, we've got you set up there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Actually, I got that screen back up. So give me a moment here. We'll just change over to the that. Wow, what is going on with the system here? So here you can see all the U.S. indices that we track trading to the downside. The Dow's off 191, S&P's off 19, NASDAQ 100 is down 88, Russell's off a couple of points, so pretty strong there, really flat. Some are down 39 points, that's 1%. They're the leader percentage-wise to the downside. Gold's up 11 bucks, trading out at 1950. Silver's up uh, one penny, trading at 25.13. Lights Recruit is off five bucks, 102.88 is the print there. Natural gas having a big day, 3% to the upside, 16 pennies, trading out at 577. 30-year treasure up 19 ticks, 150.01 is the print there. To the upside, you've got booking holdings, dollar-wise, 53 bucks. Then followed by that is Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, 1650, 2.5%. Globant, don't know what that is, but it's up 6%. Palo Alto Networks up 13 bucks, 2 and a quarter percent. And Shockwave Medical up 7% or 13 bucks. The downside is Google off 34 bucks, then followed by Amazon at 31. Uh, that's down 1%. HubSpot is off 22 or 4%. Charter Communications, 20 bucks, 3.5%. And Shopify, 20 bucks as well, just below 3% to the downside. So, what are the markets doing? Well, first, so I had to reboot. Let's go see if these new profiles still exist inside the ES. They do. And the NQ and the YM and the Russell 2000. Make sure we're on the right screen. We are. So each of the four equity future contracts are attempting to form new profiles. What that means is they are attempting to form new levels of support or resistance. Now, in the case of the ES Mini, we're looking at the very left-hand panel. What you will see is prices trading or price. The new profile that's attempting to form is below price. What that is a message of, that is a bullish message. That would remain a bullish message as long as price remains above 45.12. 45.12 is the center of what is a bearish structured profile. Of course, price is above that level. If there was just this was just a counter trend move, that would be one of the price target areas that you would be looking for, 45.12 to 45.32. Now, there's a little red trend line drawn across the top here, which price broke above a couple of days ago. So it's possible that all the ES Mini is doing is pulling back to test that level. And that's really a key area. Now, you're going to say, what is that level? If I put my cursor right at that red line, we're at about... 4567 I would say so if price uh, test 4567 rejects it hmm that's got to make you say hmm something to think about now the NQ really doing the same thing not the same thing from a trend line standpoint the same thing with regard to a profile standpoint let me just spread this out for you just a tad here so by the way the profile levels inside the ES I think I covered them but 4452 at the bottom 4512 and 4532 now this profile will not be confirmed till this evening it could change it has not changed since very early this morning and that is the same for all three of these profiles so they are truly trying to take hold but we just won't know until this evening 
If we take a look at the NQ, you can see that its profile levels, I'm going to start from top to the bottom. The top is at 14,878. The center, and this is also a slightly bearish structure profile, is at 1463. And then the bottom of that is at 14,391. Now, I want you to pay attention to both those profiles from the standpoint that the bottom of the current profile is above the prior bottom and the high of the current profile is above the prior high out there. That is a bullish trend from a profile standpoint. So that is suggesting to you and I that what the markets want to do is actually move higher. Now, they've got to be able to clear resistance. Well, in the case of the yes and the q they're already above resistance, the top of those profiles. Not the case inside the Dow and the Russell 2000. So they're the ones most certainly to continue to keep an eye on. However, their profiles are also above the prior profile. So from a trend standpoint, they are generating a message. And that trend standpoint will remain in place unless price closes below the bottom of those profiles. In the case of the Dow equity future contract, you're looking at 34,320 to 34, 534. It is a bullish structured profile. Now, when this form, price is contained with inside this area. So what does that mean? That means in, sky, in, in the case of the YM, if price is going to continue to pull back, and by the way, the YM does not have a topping pattern out here. Um, so it's really taking its uh, P's and Q's from the ES and the NQ. But should the ES and Q continue to pull back, I would assume the Dow would as well. And therefore, its price target or its buy area might be between 34,320 and 34,534. Now, you may say, why did you say might be? Well, that's because we have to take a look at the oscillator and change line values, because that could also be another price target for support. In the case of the uh, the Russell 2000, its profile levels, now the top has already been tested today, and that's at 2098. The center's at 2078, and the bottom's at 2049. So those would be the levels to be looking at. Again, they will not be confirmed until this evening, but they are providing us with important information, or at least I believe important information. And that important information right now is when we do find some type of solid bottom, that's going to be a viable bottom, and that could be setting up really the C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside for each of these. Now, that I'm not saying I'm not guaranteeing that's going to happen, but that's the logic or the thinking that should be going on as we speak right now. We'll get more of a confirmation of that come this evening or tomorrow when we're together at uh, 1 o'clock. So that's what these charts are showing us. We'll change over. I'll change over. We'll take a look at the white background charts. Well, actually, yeah, let me just change over and do that because I, uh, because of the technical difficulties that I was having, I was unable to do that 1 o'clock update. So in essence, we'll do that too. So here we take a look at this nine panel set of charts out there. You've got the ESNQ and the Dow in the upper sections here. And another potential price target is going to be that oscillator and change line. So in the case of the ES, it's at 44.85 right now. 44.85 would actually get us down towards the bottom of that daily profile. Now, if price were to that new profile that is potentially forming, if price were to test and reject that green oscillator and change line, that would also be another potential buy signal. That could also be a potential C point of an A to B equals C D to the upside. But we don't want to get ahead of ourselves at this stage. Right now, the TD9 count inside of the ES Mini has taken hold. I think we came up with a figure of about 40. What, what was it? 44.77? Let me just make sure. 45.67. So about 45.67. So if price gets below 45.67, that's going to be a signal to us that price should target that oscillator and change line, or at least the top of that profile at 45.32 level. The NQ, really the same set of patterns out here. It's got that TD9 count. It has an oscillator and change line that has changed colors. It's suggesting it move to 14.479. 14 to 479 would take us to the bottom of its daily profile out there. So those are the signals. Those are the pieces of information. The Dow, by the way, its price target around the 34, 349 level. We get back to this break. I'll go see if we've got any questions. We'll continue looking at the markets. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Right. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our first question. This one coming in from uh, Nancy A. And Nancy wants uh, our take on the uh, cues for today and tomorrow and is looking for support and resistance. So, Nancy, what I'm doing here first is we're taking a look at the NQ. And, and hopefully you caught the opening of the uh, show where we take a look at those new profile levels. So we're trying to get a feel for what's the NQ signal uh, that is uh, being generated for us as we speak. Well, right now, what the NQ did earlier this morning was it formed. Now, I've got the 30 minute time frame chart, by the way. So we're looking at a 30 minute time frame chart. What the NQ did this morning was it formed a nice TD nine count bottom that that is still held. And that's the uh, bar that took place at 10 o'clock. And that low out there, Nancy, is 1498025. So that's going to be the first key level that you need to keep an eye on. And you can see that that level has been tested. A couple of different times it was tested well first right after that at 10:30, and then was tested as we came on the air at one o'clock it's being tested as we speak right now but you can see it's holding so 14980.25 is the first level to watch if price closes below that and i would say two consecutive closes below that then we will know that a td9 count bottom will have failed and that the price target will become its breakout level and that's at 14781.75 now it would also signal an a to b equals cd to the downside and as we just take a look at the a to b leg versus the c to d leg that would get us to somewhere around the 14916 area but that would just be the one to one level so i'd be watching 1498025 so what does this mean if in fact this td9 count bottom holds well what it means is that we should see another rally attempt. In the case of the rally attempt, that would be to the oscillator and change line. If you take a look at that red oscillator and change line, and we look at uh, really since uh, earlier this morning, about 5 o'clock, price has been below it. Each rally has found resistance at that oscillator and change line. So there, that provides you with an important piece of information. That is currently the oscillator and change line for the 30-minute time frame is at 15.030. If price is able to close above that level, by the way, if price rallies from 
from here. It won't be 15030. It'll probably be like 15032, something like that. But if price is able to close above that red oscillator and change line, then the signal would be a move to resistance. And that next resistance level would be its TD9 count breakdown area. And that's at 15146. So right now, what you've got is you have an important level of support holding, and you, know, you now know the two levels of resistance that you would be observing. And I'm not saying there's not resistance at 15101 because there is. That's the top of the current profile. But it'd be 15101 to 15146. Now, let's look at the other time frame charts here for the NQ. Nancy's specific question is about the Qs, but in order for me to get my pattern information, we've got to take a look at the NQ. In the case of the NQ for the daily time frame, Again, don't want to beat this dead horse here. Not that I'm a dead horse. But you do have that TD9 count top that has taken hold both yesterday and today. We're trading below yesterday's low. That's why you're going to pay attention to that uh, level that we took a look at on the 30-minute chart, 14,980.25. If there's a close below that, that really could be signaling to you and I, Nancy, that price wants to make that move to that 14,535 level. So that is the most likely outcome. And I'd say that would be the most likely outcome as long as price remains below that 30-minute red oscillator and change line currently printing at the 15030 area. If we look at a 15-minute time frame chart, it's trying to form a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom as well as a TD9 count bottom out there. So now we're getting really super granular out here. 10-minute is showing us bottom-worthy uh, pattern out here, a TD9 count uh, potentially. Uh, if we look at a 60-minute chart out here, I don't have much. So price here is below support. What I would expect in the case of, well, I take that back. The 60-minute chart is actually in the, well, it has a wave 7 bottom. Well, really did, did need to open this up. So coming from its high out here, that high is, that we're looking at, was uh, at 4 o'clock. And that was yesterday. No, that was two days ago. So 4 o'clock, two days ago. That's the high. And we start counting our wave counts to the downside. Then what actually took place here at 11 o'clock this morning, while well, we got a TD9 count pattern, on the uh, ES Mini, I believe it was, or no, it was the 30-minute chart for the NQ, we were getting wave number seven, that's letter G on my chart out here. Now, even if that fails during the next, this is a 60-minute chart here, between now and two o'clock, meaning that price pierces that low, that low being the 14,966 level, if price pierces that between now and 3 p.m., that could give you bar number, well, that would give you a confirmed TD9 count bottom. And with its oscillator and change line having recently changed colors, price and that should catch up to each other. But that could just be a counter trend rally. You could see price has been contained by that oscillator and change line. So you'd be looking at resistance to 15073. So right now, Nancy, you're looking for the markets to answer that question for you. And those easy answers will come on any rallies. As long as these uh, TD9 count, short-term time frame patterns hold, whether it's a TD9 count or it is wave number seven, even on the 120-minute chart, you can see how price pulled back and has tested a support level. That's its breakout level of 14.962. So the cool thing here is we have all of these bottom signals, not all of these, we have a couple of these bottom signals for the short-term time frame charts out there. And therefore, we know if we see a close below the low of today out here, that's going to suggest that the markets continue to head lower. And if you get that, then it would not be unusual for price to go target that uh, 14,534 level. Now, I know that that doesn't necessarily help you out if you're only looking at QQQ series charts out there. If you are trading the uh, Qs, uh, you know, my recommendation out there is to also get access to the equity futures charts and to learn some of these pattern tools that we uh, take a look at. But I'll still try to answer your question for you about the Qs and uh, take a look at the daily chart. I'll just put this over here. This is, happens to be Nordic American tankers, but we'll just simply go ahead and change this out to the Qs and just try to provide information here to Nancy for that. So now the oscillator and change line here, and you can see this also has a daily TD9 count top. The oscillator and change line reading is 354. Now, interesting. Uh, you know how I mentioned to you that the Q, that the NQs are attempting to form a new profile below price? Well, now that we take a look at the QQQ chart, and that's thanks to Nancy out here, we can see that that's in fact indeed what took place yesterday inside of the QQQ series ETF. So, Nancy, what this tells us is that if this TD9 count continues to take hold, price should move back to 361.33 first. That's the top of that profile. 358.72nd. That could be the end of any move lower. 
And if price does get below that, then it's that oscillator and change on to 354 and below that, the bottom of that profile. So this profile has actually formed. 350.83 is the bottom of the QQQ profile. And that's, I, I think that should be an indication to us that the profile is attempting to form inside of the uh, NQ, which are below price, which is a bullish signal, is, uh, is in fact that bullish signal. And so what, what that is telling us is we should not expect or anticipate that price is going to go ahead and get back to these uh, February uh, or March lows out here inside of the queues. Now, we would take that call off if we saw a close below in the QQQ series ETF, 350.83. So that's what we've got there. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to put up the SPY chart. I just want to see if we get that same signal, meaning a new profile that formed yesterday. So we don't have that here. So the Q's signal, the NQ signal that we're looking at, I'd say that seems pretty solid and likely to form. But we don't have a new profile that has formed inside of the SPYs out there. So I can't really make that same call. The call that I can make is that if the SPYs or the S&P continues to move lower that its price target is in the 447 level the 447 is the top of the current profile as well as where its oscillator and change line is at so nancy i hope that helps you out i know uh you thought i maybe was not doing the show because of the technical difficulties but uh luckily life was happening for us and stevie was able to get everything rebooted so that we could get going online here so hopefully you heard that and have a, a terrific day we come back to this break hector and patty they are our fuel injectors. They want to take a look at WFC. I believe that is Wells Fargo. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we've got the charts for Wells Fargo up on our screen. Now, WFC is the ticker symbol. This is for Hector and Patty. And Hector's question is, is it time to load up the wagon? So and we'll shift back and forth between the white screens and the uh, blue screens out here. On the, uh, uh, the black screen, we don't, we don't like blue screens. That's the blue screen of death. But with regard to the uh, dark black background screen, the e-signal charts, one, you can see the trend line. Uh, you can also see that uh, price uh, stopped right at the uh, top of its bear structure daily profile. That was on the trading session, Hector, of March the uh, 22nd. So price really stopped where it should have. Remember, the body, the candles, the essence of price. We don't worry too much about those wicks, the upper and the lower shadows out there. Uh, so price uh, stopped right where it did. Now, it just so happens that uh, as that was occurring, that was bar number nine that was forming on that same day that price was testing that very key resistance level. So you know you've got a confirmed TD9 count top. If we just take a look at retracement from the low to the high on a daily basis, price is testing the 0.618 area. So that's at 48.99, price is trading at 48.88. Are we gonna worry about those 11 pennies? Not so much, but if you do get a close below this 48.99 level, Hector, the signal would be that price should go to the 0.786 area. Now, the cool thing is, or potential cool thing, is that what Wells Fargo is also doing, it's pulling back into its swing low from March 7th. That swing low generated volume of 56 million shares. You are only at 13 million shares at 130 after four hours of trading. So this is pulling back with light volume. The question is, where is the time to enter this uh, trade, which Hector and Patty are looking to do? Do we have that signal right now? And we don't. And one of the reasons we don't, Patty and Hector, is because price hasn't yet tested that swing point. And that swing point high is 48.58. So it's just down, you know, about 30, 40 cents from where we're trading right now. If price did close, even if it's on light volume, below 48.58 today, that's a signal that price might want to or should or could pull all the way back to the bottom of that level. But we do know that we've got a profile at 46.53. What we also know is on a weekly basis, not only is price testing that swing point area uh, or potentially testing that swing point area on light volume, the weekly already is. The weekly is inside that swing point. That was a swing that began on March 7th. Now there, there was volume of 200 million shares. It's Thursday, you're at 90 million shares. So this is really pulling back with light volume. So I get the uh, thought process, I believe, uh, Hector and Patty, that you're looking at. Now on a weekly basis, price is pulling back into its bullish structured profile area. That is between 47.51 and 48.77. So knowing what we just took a look at on the daily time frame out here, I'm gonna suggest that the better load up the wagon might be in that 47.51 level or could be just getting to that little rising trend line. No guarantees, but right now that's what I would suggest. I'd be patient on this, especially taking a look at knowing that we've got a TD9 count top on the daily and that that would suggest maybe pulling back even further. So pulling back even further. Now that we've taken care of the, uh, and, 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 and I guess if we look at the monthly chart, all price has been doing is testing the top of that monthly profile at 48.13. So that's a bullish signal as we uh, leave the month of uh, March at the end of the day. But nonetheless, let's go take a look at the white background charts and see what additional information we can glean on this. First piece of information picking up from the monthly is that price is pulled back, tested, and rejected that green oscillator and change line. That is a bullish message. So Hector and Patty, I think you're on to something. At least the monthly chart says that. Now the weekly shows that confirmed road momentum indicator top. And we did see that back here in the week of uh, March the uh, 11th out there, that price tested that bullish structured profile. So your better entry area into that says that 47.51 range. On the daily time frame chart, you can see the TD9 count top. You can see price trading below the red oscillator and change line. This is suggesting a move to 47.85 to 46.53. So maybe when you do take a position or should you take a position inside of Wells Fargo, maybe you kind of ladder into it because you might have some different entry areas here to uh, consider. You'd love to see some type of bottoming signal on a short-term time frame chart. Now, I'm not really referring to the 15-minute chart out there, but as we speak right now, we don't have that. Now, when I say we don't have that, you're actually on a 30-minute chart in bar number eight. If I just simply refresh this, that should show us that at least bar number seven. So Wells Fargo could be forming a bottom between 130, it's 134 right now, and 230. 
on a short-term basis. But the key here, what I'd be watching for, Hector, is whether or not price can overtake its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 49.18. That's what would need to happen to even give some type of suggestion of a potential uh, bottom signal out there. That's the only time frame that I see some type of bottoming signal. So things look pretty good, but I think the setup isn't here just yet just now and uh, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, wait at least for that 47.51 ish area and maybe take another look at it come uh, tomorrow uh, can we make the case that this could be support we can we most certainly can again the top of the monthly is held the center of the bull structured weekly is holding and you're at about the 0.618 retracement level of that uh, move from uh, low to high. So I hope that helps you out. hope that analysis helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in as always and have a great day. The next question coming in from Mark D. And Mark says, uh, hey, Steve, I much appreciate your humor. Well, that's great. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you for that. Two questions, if you may, you may. You know, all you have to do is just compliment the host, and then you can get as many questions as you want answered. I'm just kidding. I would answer your questions no matter what. So two questions. First one is you've been in Newmont Mining, NEM. So let's get uh, Newmont Mining flowing on these white background charts. Continue reading the question out here. Give me a moment to do that. And it says, uh, so you've been in, in Newmont Mining for a while, and it seems to be bumping against resistance and soon hit an all-time high. Boy, this Newmont Mining is looking in muy bueno. Woo. It is looking good. It's looking good. It's when I, when I say it's looking good, I mean it's taking out its daily profiles, its weekly profiles, its monthly profiles. On a monthly basis, the swing point had volume of 150 million. You're at 217 million. Boy, that's most definitely what you like to see, Mark. Um, your question is, seems, so let me go on. You say, uh, it seems to look good on a monthly. Well, there you go. I concur. And it looks great on a monthly. But needs more volume on a weekly. So the weekly volume that you're taking a look at was a week from March 7th that had 60 million. You're only at 20 million. So I see what you're looking at, but you're above resistance. You're above the top of that uh, weekly profile out there. So I wouldn't sweat it too much. And on a daily basis, the swing point has 17 million. Yeah, you're only you're only exceeding it by 3.5. Okay. So let's go see. Oh, that was the white background charts. I apologize. Um, let me do this here. Let me put that black background chart up on the screen, and, and then we'll go back to the uh, white ones. Sorry about that. Somebody should have been hitting me with a two by four. So there's the black background screens. There you can see what I was referring to and looking at this and saying, man, this chart really looks good out here. So uh, so there's a black background chart. So now let's go switch over to the uh, other charts and see what kind of signals they have. Because they may uh, suggest that, uh, hey, we're getting over our skis here. Let's go find out. So on the monthly basis, we're not over our skis at all. This is uh, negating a road's momentum indicator top that uh, formed back in May of 2021. So uh, this is looking uh, very good, like you had pointed out on the monthly basis. In the longer term is really what we're interested in. Now on the weekly side, it says, eh. You, you, you identified that weekly volume hiccup, and on a weekly basis, you're going to get bar number nine of a TD9 count. So the weekly says you could see a top uh, between this week and next week. Remember, the TD9 count pattern, the high can occur on the bar following bar number eight. Now, this would suggest that if price were going to pull back, the first level to target would be the top of the profile at 76.39, and the next area would be 71.41. I also see I've got weight number seven out there. So you have two potential topping signals on the weekly basis to go along with that low volume. That may just be preparing us for a retracement. But when we come back to this breakout here, we'll finish looking at Newmont Mining's chart, which means we'll look at the daily, which I see no topping signal whatsoever. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA 
LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, ticker symbol NEM. That's Newmont Mining. This is for Mark uh, D. And uh, so we're, let's get back to the daily time frame out here. So we've, what we've proven, or what the charts have communicated to us, is the monthly is very, very strong. The weekly says, uh, you know what, this might form a top between this week and next week out there, so just be careful. And the daily says that it's more likely next week, Mark, than this week that we would see the top. And the reason is because, one, price is taking out wave number seven. Out here, let me get my cursor. Let's get you to that day. Whoops. What did I do there? I uh, didn't do what I wanted to do. So it's taken out that high from March the 8th. No other topping signal. Price above the green oscillator and change line, the top of its daily profile. Mark, the message right now, at least at 143, I can't tell you what's going to happen at 144. But at 143, the message is that price wants to move higher. Now, it is moving higher with less relative energy. And if you didn't get a bearish reversal candle, then you know it would confirm a road's momentum indicator top and suggest that price would pull back to support. Of course, that first level and second level are going to be the OUL and then the top of that daily profile out there. So your, your question specifically was, does it look strong enough to stay in? My answer is yes, it does. I see what you're mostly focused on the weekly, but again, that daily is suggestive right now that this should see higher price. Now, it may stall out today. The reason is you've got a TD9 count top on the 65 minute, a TD9 count top on the 30 minute. And so if the highs of the day take uh, are taken out, well, that tells you about a nice strong move to the upside. But why just be, and this is, since those, those topping signals came in for those time frames. It's just been a sideways move. So there's nothing significant here or no reasons that I could find, no logical reasons. I'd have to lie to you, and I'm not going to do that. But there's no logical reasons to jettison your position right now. And the monthly chart might be saying you might want to sit through a uh, you might want to sit through a retracement here. But uh, we'll, I guess we have to deal with that once we see an actual top in the daily time frame. Your second request was to take a look at Roku. R O K U is the ticker symbol, and it says uh, the following: I entered a small position in oh you say Rock, not Roku. What was I doing? What was I thinking? So sorry about that. Um, R O C K. And, uh, well, I'm prepared to give you Roku. 
but uh, we're going to go ahead and give you the rock out here, which is Gibraltar Industries, R-O-C-K. So uh, let me just do this here quickly. I say quickly because I know it's going to take just a moment for those screens to get caught up. Let's just look at the black background screens here. and We'll go back to those white ones. So I want to make sure you entered a small position in Rock today at 44 bucks. Yeah, it looks like we're into we're in. Perhaps you're a bit early in the entry, but wanted to see if you had any feel for this one. So here's here's the issue right now. It's trading below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. That bottom was at 4537. It's trading into the swing point from February 24th that had 515,000 shares. You're trading into a light volume. What you need to see today though is it closed back above 4448, the bottom of that swing from February 24th. Even if you close below a swing with lighter volume, it says you could continue moving lower. Now I would ordinarily say continue moving lower to the bottom of the weekly profile, but price right now this week is trading below the bottom of that profile and that's at 48 uh, 46 bucks even steven so trading below that says this thing may pull back even further the first target i would look at before i look at the white background charts is the swing point that it's dealing with which were from which was from may 11th of 2020 980,000 shares there uh, but you are inside that swing point and even if you close in that swing point that would mean below 4427 you can still see lower price so these charts and you're below the bottom of the monthly profile so when it comes to Gibraltar or industries we need to go switch those white background charts what we need to do is we need to help mark find see if there's anything out there on the white background charts that suggests some type of bottom or some type of bottom is near so now we look at the monthly time frame chart we get the idea of what Mark was looking at, but this is March 31st. And Mark, this says if we close below the low of last month, that was a bar following bar number nine, that low out there is 44.48. That says that this should likely head lower. We're below any profiles. So head lower says we'd really have to do a much thorough, much more thorough investigation on that. But it would be, it's not a good signal today to close below that low. And you'd really like to see this close back about 45.82. But let's not make it too hard for this instrument. First, let's just take a look at last week's low. If we look at the weekly time frame chart here for Rock, what do we have? Well, the weekly time frame says, okay, Steve-O, how are you going to deal with this? You're in bar number nine this week. I tell you how I would deal with that. We know that lows can form in bars number eight, nine, or the bar following nine. I'd have to go with, based on the weekly chart, it would likely be the bar following nine. So you're already in it. Would you stay in it, anticipating that? I wouldn't. Um, I would go ahead and take my uh, small loss, or at least make sure you've got a stop in place, and at least watch the end of day. And if at the end of day, you're going to close below last month's low, and again, that number out there was 44.48, you're in uh, not too much below that, I'd really considering jettisoning that position out here. The daily time frame, we already talked about how it was testing a swing point. Uh, but it's trading below that swing point. That was also Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So you close below that, that says likely lower price. And you would need another bullish reversal candle on a daily basis to generate a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. That's the only bottom signal that I see at the moment for the daily time frame. On an intraday basis, do we have any kind of bottom signals? Any good news here for Mark? And the answer is the 65 minute chart is in bar number nine as we speak right now. That's going to complete at 150, so about two minutes from now. So you could get that that bottom signal that you're looking for in a short-term time frame to perhaps get that uh, enough of a bounce to get back above those key levels that we were looking at. Short of that, um, again, so how I'd play it, I'd wait towards the end of the day. I'd still have a stop, you know, maybe below the uh, low of where we're at right now because you're at bar number nine on the 65 minute chart. Uh, of course, it could go lower over the next hour and five minutes. So I would take into the three o'clock time frame. Um, so maybe, you know, you're sitting in front of your computer and, and that's how I would that's how I'd play it. I, I hope I've been clear here. Uh, and, and basically the most the most important thing is you really need to see or you'd love to see it close back above 4448. There's a possibility you could see that based upon the pattern that comes from the 65 minute time frame chart out there. So, Mark, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for listening in and uh, have a, a terrific day. Now, I don't see any other requests that have come in by email and I don't know if there's anything inside the Tiger's Den. So I'm going to go with no. Oh, I take that back. Glenn. Is that Glenn? Yeah, Glenn. Glenn M. wants to take a look at Home Depot. HD is the ticker symbol. So uh, now if there's somebody else who requested something other than uh, Home Depot inside the Tigers, then if you'd be kind enough just simply to retype that in, that would be uh, great. And, uh, and if not, um, okay.
So with regard to Home Depot, we're just waiting for this thing to pop populate. And the question was just simple. The question was, what was the question? Hi, Steve. Can you please check Home Depot? Okay. So Home Depot has a TD9 count bottom. And that TD9 count bottom took place the week of February the 25th. So that low is going to be really key. That low out there is uh, 299.29. And you're trading below the weekly profile, bullish in structure, so you're likely going to go at least target that level. Now, it might get below it, but if it closes back above it at week's end, whether that's this week or next week, then you still have a bottom that is held. On the monthly time frame chart, you are going to, it looks like, close below the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile. It has a TD9 count and a Roach Mintum indicator top. And so, Glenn, this looks like it wants to move over the longer haul back to the 246.59 level. The daily time frame chart out here, what do we have? We have no bottom signal other than price taking on that swing point that formed on February 24th. This had volume of 8.4. You're trading into it with about 4.6 million shares right now. But that bottom should be tested. That low is 299.29. Finish looking at this. We get back to the earth. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Home Depot. And as we were, before we go into break, we were taking a look at how price is trading into that swing point from February 24th, left-hand side of the uh, charts. If you're looking at in the, uh, in the data box, you can see the volume there. It says 8.4 million shares. And today we're pulling back the volume bottom right-hand panel, or bottom, bottom panel of that left-hand chart says 4.69 million shares. So you're pulling back with light volume. But ideally, you'd like to see a test and rejection of that swing point. And that says that you need to see a trade below 299.29 just for a second and then reject that level. But the danger here is that this is going to be day number two that appears below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. And what that says to us, if there's just a counter trend rally where price would find resistance is between 311 and 314. Um, so let's go back to the white background chart. So, well, on a weekly basis, what are we doing? The swing point at volume of 45 million shares, you're in it with, right now with 21 million shares. But again, you're below all these profile levels. You can see a little bit of a trend line that it's hitting, a support trend line on the weekly time frame. Back to the white background chart, just see if there's anything additional that we can provide with regard to Home Depot. So at this stage here, all we've said is it's pulling back in that swing point with lighter volume and likely should test it. Now, what you'd love to see here to confirm that a bottom is in is not really just a test and rejection of that swing point because there's a road momentum indicator signal triggered. What you'd like to see is some type of bullish reversal candle. That would then confirm a road momentum indicator bottom. That doesn't mean you're out of the woods. You'd still need to see price close about 314.79 to get you out of those woods, but at least you'd have a bottoming pattern other than just a test and rejection of a swing point out there, which is what Stevie would prefer to see. On an intraday basis out here, it's back to the 65 and the 30-minute charts that have the bottom signals. The 65 has a TD9 count bottom. It has a road momentum indicator bottom. That says that price should go target 304.23. It looks like you're going to get a TD9 count bottom on the 30-minute basis. Oh, well, the show is over? Wow. And uh, what you're looking for here, uh, Glenn, is you'd like to see a close above 302.43 to suggest a further rally. Folks, uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. After David Tumble, Brian will take us on home. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Have a terrific Thursday, folks.